Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of From Boardroom to Dining Room, Finding Balance. And today's guest is a very, very special guest. I'm super excited to have her um, here with me. And um, I was it was one of those people I was like, oh, I hope she's available, because she just mm -hmm. is such a fun, fun person to have on board. So oh, you just got a little glimpse of her. So. <laughs> it is Michelle Northrup, and she is the saucy queen, and um, she is saucy. That's her, her business and her um, tagline and just her personality, really, in a nutshell. And um, just briefly, to uh, I've known Michelle for a, a couple years now. We met through a uh, networking group, and I'll, and I'll get a little bit more into it, but I just want to do a quick bio on Michelle. Um, and... Michelle Northrup, a.k.a. Saucy Queen, has been burning down the competition within the fiery food industry for many years. Her all-natural gourmet hot sauce company has won more than 50 national awards within five years. Michelle was named Tampa Bay Businesswoman of the Year in Manufacturing and Business Leaders Women and business leaders, women extraordinaire, and she is on fire. And that is um, that is just to put it lightly, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Michelle. Now Thank we, you. Now Thank you so that. much. I was so honored that you asked me to be a part of this. Well, we, we I, it wouldn't be complete without you. <laughs> Absolutely. So I just want to give a little background. So I met Michelle at a networking uh, event. I mean, I, I guess now. So I've, I've lived in Tampa four years now. Right. And I think it was within one of the first couple of events that I went to. So yes. if it wasn't, it could have been the end of um, the year that I moved here, within six months, I, so in the last three and a half years. And you were doing a branding um, workshop at uh, the photographers. Oh, and, yes. Um, yeah. And so that's where I met you. And you were, uh, you know, throwing out, people were answering questions, and you were throwing out your carrot keychains. Yes. And um, and I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually everybody's first response. <laughs> As I'm sure the viewers today are wondering what the heck that is that has landed on top of my head. Well, and what is it? So if they can't see it clearly, what okay. is that on top so, of your head, miss? This is uh, feathers and peppers. I was going for the saucy look. Yes, and and you usually have something if it's not some some uh, a sauced out uh, what are they called um, a fascinator right yeah. that you have some sort of uh, apron on or something something yes. yeah yeah so and I think um, the the networking group that you came to that that's what I was talking about that night is you know becoming your brand to make sure that your customers know right away what it is that you do or how you want your brand to be portrayed, yes. Yeah, and you were, and I've seen you speak on that topic many times right. over, over the years, and I always get something new, new out oh, of it. Good. Um, mm -hmm. Because you really, you really are, um, not only are you passionate about the, the branding part of your, you're very passionate about you, your business, and that all comes together, and you really are the epitome of, um, of branding yourself oh. um, to, and like you said, when you when you see you, you you know most almost right. every picture you have a bottle of one of your sauces or um, a chili right. finger sticking out of your head or yes. <laughs> <laughs> or throwing carrots into the crowd, you know. That is right. So now on the, on the carrots, tell us a little bit about because I love this story about how you got started um, sure. in this business. Sure. Um, I was actually working in the garden at my children's school, and the vegetable of the week was carrots. And so we all took a basket of carrots home, and we had to come up with something completely unique that the students hadn't tried before to inspire them to eat their vegetables. So I took home the basket of carrots, and I had some peppers, and I thought the natural balance, that sweetness in the carrots would balance well with the peppers. So I made some dips and nachos and salsas and brought it in and for the students to try, and they really loved it. They're like, Miss Michelle, Miss Michelle, you need to bottle this. And I thought, well, I don't really know anything about bottling. And um, that weekend I went to the grocery store and started looking at the labels and realized that I couldn't pronounce most of the ingredients and in the labels that were on a standard uh, store shelf. So 
uh, I talked to my husband. I said, you know what? You know, maybe we should do this. And so we decided to take a chance. We actually had enough money to just do one single batch. It was either going to work or everybody we knew would just get a gift, you know, a joke gift for the holidays of a bottle of hot sauce. Um, and that was almost six years ago. And we're, you know, we've won awards and it's just been a saucy good ride since then. <laughs> we've, we've expanded our brand from um, carrot based hot sauces to um, other vegetable based hot sauces, barbecue sauces, ketchups, marinades, dipping sauces, stir fry. So the, the brand has evolved over this time from just the little carrot keychain. Yeah. How many products do you do you know how many products you have in your line now? I well, we're, this week, starting Thursday, we'll have four uh, new dips as well. So I believe that brings us to 17 or 18. Wow. I think 18, yes, in the line. And has so everything just, has everything continued? Uh, is there anything that you've discontinued that hasn't we, worked? Or is everything we did around? discontinue our curry ketchup, um, but I think we're going to bring it back. We've had many... Um, customers that are just, you know, I'll buy a case, I'll buy two, please bring it back. So <laughs> I think we may bring that back after the holidays. Nice. And so, okay, so the, the dips, are they in packet form? or how? Yes, how they're like in a dry spice packet form that you add sour cream to. And nice. we've tested out um, many different blends, and we've come up with four that uh, that everybody just loves. Yeah. And I know you always your price point is is amazing, which Thank I you. is uh, I think it makes it very attractive for people to 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 start uh, trying your sauces, right? And all the other elements, but then um, to stay addicted to them, pretty much. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. We want to make sure everybody can get sauced. That's right. And I know you also around the holidays offer a lot of um, specials and you are all, so anyone watching in the uh, Tampa Bay area, I know you are you are everywhere this time yes. of year and um, I know this weekend you did a couple shows and coming up right. you have some, so we'll make sure that um, we, we mention those at the end so we people can right. know where to find you. Thank so you. And we do a lot is, of box sets during the holidays. And now where do you store everything? What would you say? Where do you store everything? Oh, we have a storage facility. And then we also have our bottling plant in Clearwater. Nice. So it's not all. I see your your kitchen is clear. I was wondering yeah, if there was going to be boxes up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our bottling plant. Um, they do our productions in 100 gallons or 200 gallons, depending on the product. Wow. Wow. So you really have to, you kind of have to plan ahead. Right. For what's going to be. And then we out. we're in a um, you know several restaurants, so some of the products. Some of the runs are single bottles plus gallon bottles so that the restaurants are able to utilize the sauce oh, really? as well. And what, what do you find is um, the most popular within the, the restaurants? Definitely garlic goodness because it takes over 100 pounds of fresh garlic to do a single 60-gallon batch, and that's with a four-pepper blend. Wow. So uh, the restaurants really love the uniqueness of it's almost like a garlic puree. Right, right. And what restaurants are, are currently you allowed to say? Yes, yeah, okay. yes. Um, Burger Monger, uh, they go they use our ketchup and our garlic. We have Della's After Dark, the refinery uses our carrot karma sauce, um, Eats American Grill, um, and a few others as well. Yeah, nice. So Three Birds great. Tavern, they just picked up our sauces too. Oh, good. Yeah, that's good. And they and I love your um, the ketchup. Not I, did, I don't think I've ever oh, tried yeah. the curry one, but the other um, the chup. Yes. Yeah. It's that like grown up ketchup. Yes. yes, that one is great. We were talking earlier about um, what's good on eggs and and different things, and yes. um, that's one of my favorite. Yeah. So um, on the on the business side. I know you're, like I said, you are all over the place and you do a lot of um, shows and right. really spread spread the word through grassroots movement. Yes. Um, what, what kind of tips can you give people uh, that might be starting out that, um, that have a product to sell? 
that, that would be helpful that you found that you wish you knew like a little bit earlier? Right. I think that um, one thing that definitely helped me in my business is um, making a lot of co-promotions and doing partnerships with others. When you start off with a business, you don't have a huge marketing budget. You don't even have a little marketing budget. You have yourself. You have social media. You have friends that are also trying to get started in their own business. So right. I definitely feel that making those connections with your friends and doing co-promotions with them, I think that really makes a big difference. Nice. That's a great, that's a great um, idea. And like you said, with the branding, you, you are always awesome about, um, well, the branding, but then also you are really great about um, promoting other um, partners, but, but also right. small businesses. And I know that's a, that, that is a passion of yours as well to uh, yes, help out absolutely. everybody. Absolutely, and uh, you know, because it is important to buy local. So um, you know, our glass company's local, our bar bottling company's local. But when you're doing co-promotions, also, it doesn't have to be something that typically makes sense. It really has to just be something that's balanced. So, for example, one of the co-promotions that I did, which was a really huge success for both parties, is. Um, um, a friend of mine who's an eye doctor, and we both got started in social media at the same time and both had that same passion for connecting with others. And so as an eye doctor, he bought my carrot-based hot sauce and would give it away to customers. So what a cool niche. You would never think of an eye doctor in a hot sauce company, right. but it right. really raised the bar for both of us, and it really... Like all of his customers, you know, at that point may not have heard about my hot sauce, and all of my customers may not have heard about him in the, you know, in his industry. So it really worked out well, and it was a cool enough niche that for him in the future, um, you know, to be able to speak at conferences to say as an eye doctor, and then I used a hot sauce. They're like, "What you did? Right. What?" So it's so <laughs> neat to be able to put things together and co-promote with others. Even if it doesn't typically make sense, um, it's just it's a neat way to bring attention to both companies. Yeah, that's a great, uh, like you said, and then you have a, a an interesting story to tell also. Right. Really fun. Right. Yeah. So now, what other kind of branding? Um, so those are your your co promoters or your partnership. Right. What kind of branding tips would you would you give people? You know, I mean, I lean to the visual side. So right. Um, and so, I your labels are awesome. Oh, and yeah. I draw all my labels. I don't know if you knew that, but I draw the labels. I think that um, one thing is that so many people get stuck on their logo, and that their logo is so important. Which I think your logo is important, but I think more important than your logo is the feel that you get from either your products, your, um, your postcards, your business cards, your website. There should be a general feel that you have within your line or within your industry that you have. So, for example, um, all of my bottles are all a little bit different, but you can, you can still see the feel that it is our line and our brand. Right. And so I think that when you do, um, um, you know, the background on your, your Facebook page when you do your website, it shouldn't always just be focused on your logo. I like to say that sometimes people's logo are their ego <laughs> and that you need to sometimes release that yeah. and focus more on a feel because not everything is, um, you know, is conducive to just a logo. Right. And the and other I, thing I think is important in branding is that, say, with your business cards or um, your website, um, really within a second or two, your customer should be able to tell exactly what it is that you do. And so that's why I think sometimes your, your logo should, of course, be on your card somewhere, but more important than that should be something visual to impact your customer to remember, you know, what it is that you do. Right. Right, and and I think that's very very true. You see, um, I mean, to your point, you can't always use use your logo. 
Right. And sometimes you, you can't use it. And people don't, your consumers don't need, necessarily want it right in their face all the time. Right. So whether, um, I think, to your point, whether you use the same colors, whether you use yes. the same, um, you know, kind of overlay or even shape of maybe your, your promotional material. Right. Yeah, so all of those things, what, what ties it together? I think that it should be that your brand has a personality. Yeah. You know, and your, your company has a name, but then you have a personality too. So I think that it's important in your branding that the personality of your brand really is what shines through, not necessarily always just your name or always just your logo. Right, right. Well, I mean, and given your hat, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, if that's not personality, I don't know. <laughs> One day I might come out of my shell. Right, right. If you could be a little bit more, um, if we could figure out what you do, that would be awesome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so you are always on the go, and I, so where, my, one question I always try to ask everyone is, um, where is your office? What do you consider your office? And I Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, I use my iPad and my iPhone more than my computer because I'm always at, on the go. I could be at the boys' uh, football game doing work or while they're at practice or um, out delivering sauces. I might be in the passenger seat doing yeah. the invoicing while you know somebody else is driving and delivering. So um, I would That's definitely That's what is better. Say, I've, I've seen you on both sides of that seat. And yes. I'm like, get that boy over there to drive. <laughs> That's right, exactly. They're almost at that age, so that'll be good. We could do three times the deliveries. That's so. right. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely mobile, and, um, I, and I don't know what I would do without the apps that are out there now that make my life so much easier. What are your, what are your favorite apps? Do you have an app that you use for time scheduling? No, no, that's all up in here, up in okay. the saucy, uh, saucy yeah. brain here. But um, I use a lot of design apps and invoicing apps. Um, of course, the standard uh, pages and keynotes and numbers. But uh, as far as design goes, I like uh, Pick Collage. Yeah. I do a lot of flyers and promotion, you know, with that. Nice. And um, invoicing, I love Invoice to Go. Invoice to Go, I've never heard of that. I yeah. love it. I love to be able to walk up to a market like Bears Groves and for them to say, okay, I'll take two of this, one of this, three of that. And then for me to be able to just invoice them instantly and then email it right to them, it's just, it's so professional looking and it's easy and then it keeps track for me as well. That's a great tip. All right. I'm going to remember that one. It's called Invoice to Go? Invoice to Go. I believe it was only a few dollars. Okay. They have a free version, but then I think the one I have now is just a few dollars. And do you, and you, so that goes right to them? Correct. Then it can be emailed to them. It, it alerts me if anybody's overdue. You could choose if you want a same day, a seven day, a 30 day term. Awesome. And then it also saves all the products for you. So if I start typing in Chai Chipotle, it pulls up Chai Chipotle Chup and my wholesale pricing, or you can enter pricing in manually. All right. We have we have someone comments. They say that they love that you draws all that you draw all the logos. Oh, good, good, good. All the labels. Yes. Can I yeah. show one? Yes, do yes. Okay. Good, good, good. Let's see if we could see. This is my the newest product. This that. is the butterfly that I drew for Saucy Everything, and you can see on the bottom. And this is on all of my gourmet labels I have grass on the bottom because I don't ever want to forget my grassroots start so I, I have that to symbolize you know how we started you know with our marketing and started off the company nice oh I love that I didn't know that see learning something yeah. <laughs> symbolism everywhere <laughs> and what is the butterfly yes and the butterfly on the butterfly itself I actually drew um, a little fleur-de-lis because my husband and I, Tom, we got married in New Orleans. So on the butterfly, I put the fleur-de-lis. And then for my boys, 
hidden in the artwork. If you look up close, I have their initials drawn into the artwork. Really? Yes. And all on right. all of the sauces, somewhere on the icon in the middle, there's hidden little pictures and uh, hidden meaning to each of them. Well, I'm going to have to run down right now and get my <laughs> get my bottles out. <laughs> I did not know that. All right. Yes. Now it makes it even more interesting. Well, uh, the sauce you just showed, I know we were talking a little bit earlier before the, the show started. Right. But, um, I, I absolutely love it. And I am I'm not a mayo girl. So right. um, I was, I was, but I'm very interested in it. My husband loves mayo and he's a mayo person. But um, I have used the saucy everything on pretty much everything. I, <laughs> I, I my favorites, as I was telling you, is on um, some roasted potatoes. Oh, yes. Uh, and that can be dinner or brunch. I love it for brunch. And kind of dipping those in there, you know, very like English style. I feel right. Maybe I'm being proper, but even though it's, it's spicy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the spicy mayo and, and um, and um, oh, and now on any a lot of times we'll get uh, deli sandwiches over the, on the weekend for right. projects just to keep us going. And um, I always put it on there. I used to get the horseradish sauce, but now I use the the saucy everything. Oh, good! And, um, it is delicious and makes it, it makes it you know a takeout sandwich right. taste a little bit more homemade and a little bit more personalized. Yes, so, you yeah. need to try it with seafood too. Oh, which what seafood? Very good. Any kind of fried seafood, it's amazing. Instead of a tartar sauce, yeah, it has just like a depth of flavor that tartar sauce doesn't always have. Oh, that would be good. Really good. Po boys. When we were in New Orleans a few weeks ago, I highly suggest po boys with saucy everything. All right. All right, I have to get my uh, po' boy recipe <laughs> out. I do. I love to order them out. I've never made them at home, but anytime they're on a menu, I, I oh, do. Oh yes. You'll yeah. have to sneak your bottle of saucy everything in your purse. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know you said that that was um, immediately a, a huge hit. Huge. For you. Yeah. Yes. Um, we, we released it on a Saturday, and then by the next Friday, I had people calling me saying, listen, I have like an inch left in this bottle, and I cannot be without it. So... It's brand new, but we've had more repeat customers than, you know, say a bottle of hot sauce that typically might sit in a refrigerator, you know, for six months. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, I have, well, I think I've told you this before, but we have, a you know, that, that bottom row in your um, refrigerator, in my refrigerator. Oh! The door <laughs> is, I mean, it's it's yeah. like basically my uh, Intensity Academy um, sauce row. Oh, so good. they're all lined up in there. All the different <laughs> sauces, the ketchups. Right. Now, but I have to say the saucy everything is at the top. It's, it's near my salad dressings. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> For easy access up there. <laughs> Now you mentioned something earlier. What what your recipe, which I think will be awesome for the holidays right. with people um, uh, looking for to make dips and things. You yes. mentioned the pimento cheese. Yes. With that or something similar. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So um, I like to make homemade pimento cheese, and I thought instead of adding t a typical mayo, I tried it with saucy everything, and it's amazing. So it is with cream cheese, a really good quality cheddar cheese. I like cabbage cheese. Um, and then saucy everything as much as you want in it because some people like their pimento cheese uh, firm and then other people like it where they could spread it. So, um, And I do that in my mixer and it comes out great. I made a grilled cheese sandwich with it and it was a huge hit. With my that is voice. awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try the grilled cheese now. And I love grilled cheese with um, tomato. So oh, that would be good with it. Oh, you know yeah. what else I did with it? I stuffed uh, fresh jalapenos with it. Nice. So it was like a jalapeno popper. So good. So with the cheese and then put it in yes, there with the pimento cheese. Like the I'm calling it pimento cheese, but it's really cream cheese, cheddar cheese, saucy everything blended together well blended and so I stuffed the fresh jalapenos with that and roasted those in the oven. Nice. All Very right. Now, that sounds delicious. Speaking of other recipes, we have a couple questions that came in on Facebook before the interview. And so the first question is, what is your favorite recipe 
for buffalo wing sauce? Ooh. For me, um, it is our award-winning chai sweet chili. It won the top award for wing sauce in Houston last year. So if you make, if you take your wings as soon as they come out of the fryer hot, and you toss them in the chai sweet chili, there's really no need even for butter. Um, and then it has that sweet with a little bit of sticky, nice. Uh, Thai flavoring to it, like an oriental flavor. Yeah, beautiful, really nice. good. So that's perfect for well, anytime you're entertaining, obviously. But I right, think, you know, the uh, Super Bowl or any. I think so with Nail football gaming. season because yeah. everybody does a buffalo wing sauce, but I think the sweet chili just is so different and memorable. Um, in our house, uh, we don't do a lot of chicken wings, but we do a lot of chicken tenders. Yeah. So. The same thing could go with that. Chicken tenders tossed with it, hot right out of either the oven if you don't want to fry them, if you are baking them, or out of the fryer, either one. Nice. All right. I know it's so much. I always, um, the, the biggest, biggest question I get when people are asking about entertaining for football games is Bloody Mary um, set up. Yes. So now I'm, I'm going to be able to give them an appetizer too. Oh, good. good. <laughs> All right. The next question. Um, is she a habanero or a scotch bonnet kind of hot sauce girl? Oh, well, most of my sauces have habanero, but I can take all the way up to Trinidad Scorpion, um, and, you know, the hotter the better for me. But <laughs> I do like the brightness in a habanero because I, I think it has that fruity, bright flavor that is usually right there at the tip of your tongue. I really love that. All but right. I try not to discriminate with my peppers because I like them all. <laughs> like your children, you know, you you can't pick just one pepper. So um, no, we don't, know, I do we don't want to pepper. Right, I do love <laughs> Thai peppers a lot too. The little uh, red hot Thai. A lot of our products have the Thai peppers in them. Yeah, I love the Thai. That I, yes. I do like that flavor. Yeah, I mean yes. you have to be sparing with them, but um, oh no, 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 you don't. <laughs> When I go to my local Thai restaurant, I don't order Thai hot. I order Saucy Queen hot, which is typically 10 to 14 of the peppers chopped up. Nice. All right, so now if you are in the Tampa Bay, Clearwater, St. Pete area, yes. that's what we're going to have to start um, requesting and yes. see what happens. Saucy right? Queen hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have one more question. What is Michelle's favorite family recipe? Ooh. That's a hard one. I try not to repeat um, many recipes within the month, so we try to always do something different. But um, I would have to say our favorite lately um, is our mussels. We do a steamed mussel with marsala. Um, what we did is we took um, onions and shallots in the food processor with a whole heck of a lot of garlic goodness in there to make like a mash and in my big wok um, I sauteed that for a little bit with some butter and just a little bit of olive oil and then added well probably at least a half a bottle of Marsala wine <laughs> <laughs> a little more garlic goodness some fresh basil and tossed the, uh, the cleaned mussels in there and just tossed it in with the sauce with a big hunk of beautiful French bread that's really been our family favorite lately, I would say. That sounds. I I love mussels, and any time I can order them at a, at a restaurant, I, I definitely do. So you really uh, need to try it with marsala. Oh my goodness, so good. You know, I they um have you used it with the with the Thai basil? Yes. That would be good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah. We all also right. do a um, with our chai thai teriyaki. We do a teri a chai thai teriyaki mussel recipe as well, with a little bit of coconut milk. Now I know you're you're also famous for those meatballs. Yes, chai thai meatballs. And, and uh, just so if anybody wants these recipes, where where do they are they all on your website? Yes, or? all of the recipes are on our website, which is www intensityacademy.com and it's under saucy recipes. Okay, awesome. And where else can they find you? Oh, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. On, 
On is, Instagram, I'm at Saucy Queen. On Twitter, at Saucy Queen. And on Facebook, it's Intensity Academy Gourmet Sauces. All right, yeah. that's And um, tell them what about the Intensity Academy, just a quick uh, before, so they can know or remember, so they have a story in their head why, why they need to go there. Sure. Um, so our sauces are all natural. We use the highest quality of ingredients. Um, and something that sets us apart a little bit different is we were the first sauce company to use organic teas as infusions. Not confusions, infusions <laughs> in our sauces. So instead of adding water, say to our chai chai, I wanted to add a layer of flavor. So the organic chai tea just adds a layer of flavor to the sauce. And then say if you're marinating with it, that organic tea just permeates beautifully into the protein. It does. You, I know we've done um, a lot of um, marinades um, yes. with that with that particular sauce. So that's awesome. And um, uh, what are you going to be doing this holiday? Since I'm so we're coming up in the holidays, so I want to make sure we ask what are what are you going what are your plans for the holidays? So, uh, we usually go to the mountains sometime during December. And one of the cool things I know I've shared with you in the past is that instead of cutting down a Christmas tree that we buy a live tree uh, with roots and we have our Christmas tree on our porch um, in the mountains and then when the holidays are over we plant it in our driveway so we have trees that line our driveway going up so it's all Christmas past as yeah. you go up the driveway. I know I love that and I love that story and I and you get a, a pretty decent size tree because yes. a lot of times when you get a root ball tree they're on the smaller side, but uh, you, right. it, yours is a decent sized tree. Yes. Yes. yes we try to get. Yeah. <laughs> we like big, big. Right. <laughs> Even the Christmas tree is saucy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michelle, I really, really appreciate you being here. And oh, um, thank oh you. and now where? So again, if they're watching it live, where can they see you um, the next uh, couple weeks? And then sure. also, this will um, obviously replay, so they can find you. Absolutely. Is there a Absolutely. calendar also on your website that they can Yes, our open? calendar of events and the stores that we're in locally are also on the website. Uh, this week we will be at Think Pink with Working Women of Tampa Bay on Thursday at Ruth Eckerd Hall. Saturday we will be at Shoppa Palooza, which is a great Black Friday style event for mom and pop shops and to support local by getting still Black Friday specials. That's this Saturday coming up. And then in a few weeks, we will be at Lake Park in Lutz off of Dale Mabry for the Lutz Land of Lakes Women's Show, which is one of the biggest shows we do all year. And that's December 7th and 8th. All right. All right. And then the rest of the year, in case they're catching this in the, in the spring, sure. um, there is always, a calendar on your event? Yes. They can always go to the calendar up on the events. There's always ways to contact us. And we do box sets, which are great for the holidays as well. They make great corporate box sets, you know, that include all the award winners in them. Awesome. And I know you're always cruising around in one of the, the counties and making special deliveries. Yes. I know we've met in some interesting parking lots, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you gotta have your fix. So that's, that's right. Well, well Michelle, I really, really appreciate you being here and um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and, and hear your advice and um, just to always hear your, your smile or see your smile and hear uh, that fantastic laugh. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Carol. I had a great time. It went so quick. I know, it does. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you and thank you everybody for watching. And uh, make sure you uh, I check in the the show notes, which will be posted um, over, hope, I'm going to hope for Thursday. That's my goal because I know we want to get this out there and um, so everybody can see see you at your upcoming events. Um, right. And you follow Michelle because she is fantastic on Instagram and Facebook. I love to follow her on, on Instagram and see what's up in her kitchen. So right. and she's great about posting questions and all kinds of things. So everybody check her out, Saucy Queen and Intensity Academy. So we will... Uh, make sure we'll uh, get over there and check that out. So thank you very much, everybody, for being thank here. Thank you. And Michelle as well. Thank you. Thank you.